having trust, you know, and showing trust in a lot of those guys, you know, because he knows that he's just, he just can't do it all by himself in terms of the shot making, because if it's somebody wants to take him out, just go trap him. And then so, we can't just keep throwing the ball back to him. You know, he's someone else's got to make a play. And I, I was proud of the way the other guy stepped up and made some plays. And obviously Alex shot the ball extremely well. I think his threes were really helpful considering that for most of the game, we did not shoot it great. What do you think about the way Io played defensively? He had a lot of big assignments. He was battling Siakam. I mean, I mean, I, I, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, he 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 really uh, competed and and battled and um, on, on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, we got up by ten. I think to close with, towards the end of the third, up eight, maybe to start the fourth. And you know, we just didn't play well enough to even hold water there. Um, so we kind of got those guys back in. Um, you always get a little bit concerned about, you know, like the minutes we've talked about. Right. And um, I tried to change some of the rotations. But, you know, I think Io, because of that, got caught in a situation that he was guarding Halliburton. He was guarding Siak. He was guarding everybody, yeah. you know. And unfortunately, with some of the things that we've had to, to endure, some of these guys are going to have to log, obviously, a lot of responsibilities. And Io is one of them. How do you feel like his presence in those like fourth quarter clutch overtime moments is? Io, yeah, he's not afraid. You know, I, I, that's the thing I respect about him. Uh, like even the three he missed, like they went under on the screen, he stopped right behind it with confidence and shot the ball. We need that, you know, because if he makes it, you know, maybe we go up five and it's a good shot. It's not a bad shot. And like I said, it, it all can't be Demar. Demar's going to be obviously a focal point. He's going to be heavily involved, but. We've got to have guys space the floor correctly, and the next guy's got to make the the, the play when the ball comes to them. And um, like I said, he, he he missed that three, and then comes back and has, you know, had a turnover, and then he responds right back with a drive. I just I love the way Io just keeps himself in the game competitively, regardless of if something happens, good or bad. What was the uh, approach on the second free throw when Lamar missed the free throw? You know. He shot, you know, he shot way up high. Do you, do you have a strategy on that, or no? Him what he wants to do? No, 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 no. We we knew we had a miss. We were out of timeouts. Right, it was three point eight. So I put. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, no, no. I think what we wanted to do with at least with Andre and 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 Drum there. I think Alex was talking to the group a little bit out there too. You know, you want to give those guys with their length a chance to at least go up and maybe somehow deflect it or pop it free or get it to one of our guys. Um, and we were fortunate that we were able to get it back. Uh, but I thought the way DeMar missed it in terms of giving those guys a chance to go get it. Because sometimes you can throw it so hard off the rim and like the, the free throw shooter tries to get it back real quick. And that's sometimes... Oh, no, I don't... I, no, I don't... Th we really try not to practice mission too much, Sam. <laughs> we try not to. <laughs> <laughs> it did work. It did work. Yeah. What do you notice about your team in these clutch games and these post overtime games that you all are finding ways to win? Well, I think Demar is an incredible closer. You know, give him you know a, a lot of, of credit, and respect for that. But you know, I think the other guys are leaning into those moments. Like, didn't talk about it. like we got hung up at the end of the shot clock, and Vooch drove Turner and. Made a nice turnaround move and, you know, made that shot. Gave us a little bit of breathing room. Isles drive downhill for a layup. You know, Alex is cut to Torrey for a layup on the baseline. Um, I think just guys just need to be ready to step up and make plays. And I do think that, you know, however some of the stuff gets analyzed in terms of luck or good fortune or what have you, last year we were on the short end of the stick of a lot of them, you know. And <clears throat> I think for your team, those moments – you, you, you can't always control the ball going in, but you can control kind of like what kind of shots you get, how you execute and how you do those things. And I feel like those guys were all on the same page. And, and DeMar is not the kind of guy that just, hey, it's, 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 it's me and nobody else and I'm doing he, – he doesn't have that mentality. I give him credit. Like, he gets off it because he knows that if the couple of these other guys make a couple shots, a couple of plays, a couple of things happen, one, it's going to free things up and make it easier for him. But two, it also makes it easier for those guys too. So, I mean, we've had some good fortune. Things have gone on well. I think guys have executed well. Um, we've made some timely shots, you know, this year that have kind of helped um, get us to overtime. You know, certainly if DeMar's shot's short or long in regulation, you know, it's a tough loss, uh, you know, on the road. And sometimes those margins are that small, you know, where, you know, you got you to be able to make some plays in those moments. And I think one thing I feel good about is I feel like our, our guys lean into trying to make plays, which is what you want, but it doesn't mean it's always going to go great. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you.